sitting and it came again. So, I want to take you back to a scripture. We didn't do um, New Testament reading today, but I want to take you back to Acts. Acts chapter 9, you hear the story of the conversion of Saul. Saul was one that was killing Christ, you know, believers. He didn't like them. He took permission from the authorities and go out and really kill them. So he was on that journey one day when the Lord visited him. Because of what he's done, the believers were afraid of him. But God spoke to a prophet and said, go to this man that was killing you and pray for him. And he was not very happy. I don't think you will be as well if somebody had been persecuting you for you to be told, go and pray for the person. But he did. And when he got there, in I think verse 17, he called him Brother Saul. How about that? Somebody that was planning to kill you, your family, and everybody, he came and called him brother. What has this got to do with anything? It has a lot to do with the fact that when God speaks to us, we listen. Sometimes it's not palatable. It's not the best. It's not what we want to hear. But it's what is important to us at that point. It's what will make our journey, you know, better in life. We've been reading through Zechariah. Before this, we did Nehemiah. And they are all prophets. The prophets, they hear from God. And it's what they hear, they speak. Sometimes it's hard to listen and do what is being told to us. We all dream. Do you dream? Yeah? Sometimes when we dream, we say, hmm, it's just a dream. It's a nightmare. I don't want to think about it. And you walk away. But I want you to just think back what Zachariah did. This is the eighth of the visions that he saw. And each time, he asks, he asks the angel of God, what exactly does this mean? He saw the pictures. He heard the words. But he was not so confident in himself to say, oh, yeah, I saw you know, a bottle of water in my dream, or I saw a stream. Yeah, maybe it's just water. I walked past the water yesterday. That's why I'm dreaming about it. No. He asked. So what are, you know, copying from what he did, when you dream, spend some time. Stay in prayers. Talk to the one that has given you that vision. It's a vision. It's a dream. It's a vision. Talk to him and he will expand more on what has been given to you. Don't just, you know, toss it aside. So, I say, what is a vision? So in the Bible, in the Bible, the word vision is more often used as an encounter with God where he imparts special revelations. Often, this comes in dreams, and they might be in dark scenes. In um, Numbers 12, 6, um, some, uh, that's one of the examples. Some visions can be, you know, in different from where God speaks directly to the, the person, that's the visioner. Um, number 12, verse 8, you will see that there. A vision is sometimes seen in a dream, trance, and they could be conveying revelations and supernatural things that we need to know. And sometimes the vision that we are given is not particularly for that day. It might be for future purposes. Zachariah, the name itself, says God remembers. 
when you have been given a vision or you have had a dream and you think that dream is lost. I don't know about you. Sometimes I have dreams. It does not come to pass that same time. Sometimes I've forgotten about it. But if you are you know, one of those disciplined people and you write down your dreams, years down the line, you will go back. When you, you know, if you see the book and you read it, you will see that those dreams that you think, you know, have been dead, long gone. Some of them have come to pass. And when you see it, you say, wow, I didn't actually remember I had this dream. That's God. He was speaking to you. But you were too busy to take notice. But thank God you wrote it down, if you did. And you come to realize that he was speaking to you all along. Um, yeah. So that's the dreams. That's dreams how it comes and it comes and it comes to, comes to give us messages and messages that um, we can work with. Now, in this vision that um, we are reading about, the, 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 the four horses or the chariots those horsemen, they ask for permission to stay around longer, to walk around in the earth. But at that time, they did not get the go ahead to go. But later, in this verse, in this chapter we're reading, they were given the permission to go. There's a lot of do words in here, actions. You were sent a message and you go. When you're given something to do or an instruction and you just sit on it, then you haven't listened to what was said to you. These chariots, they were all given a destination to go to. They did not say, okay, uh, it says these people go to the north, these people go south. Uh, we're just going to all stay here or not move at all. Some of us, we get visions. We get dreams. God wants us to get up and do something. But we sit. So what are you sitting for? You say, oh, I, I want to be a millionaire tomorrow. But you're doing nothing. What's going to happen? Are this, is this money going to fall from heaven on your lap? So when a vision is given to you or a dream is given to you, it's up to you to get up and do something about that vision. Don't sit down and wait for somebody else to do it for you. God is not going to come down from heaven to pick a pen and write it down. Neither is he going to come down from heaven to pick up the phone and phone somebody for you. That's your job. He gave you the opportunity and the power to do that. So what he has given you the opportunity and power to do, he's not going to do it for you. So try and take example from what Zachariah did. He had a dream. It's a vision. And, you know, he put it out there. He didn't just leave it in his, in his mind. God gave him the vision and he wrote it down. Today we are reading from it. Learn to write it down. I'm not so good at it either. Okay? So, do I, I have dreams. I have visions. Some people are very good, like I said. They have, um, you know, journals. And they journal every dream. You, you might be very good at that. Yeah, I can see that. But <laughs> I am one that have dreams and I have journals. At a point, I have a book by my bed where I will write them. If I don't write them straight away, I forget them. But when it gets down to making a vision board or something, people are very good at that. Every year they do it. But I don't. I'm not very good at it. I'm trying. You know, when God gives you a vision, put it down and try and follow it. It's wonderful 
when it comes to pass. It gives you a theme of joy and fulfillment. I have prepared a lot for this, but where the Lord is taking me is not what I've written down. I have notes. I will put down in the front there. You can pick and look at it properly for yourself. Um, and there are questions there for you to go into. Um, yeah. So the other thing actually that the Holy Spirit is kind of laying in my heart right now to talk about is the meaning of that word Zachariah. God remembers. When I was looking at this, it says, this Zachariah we are reading about is the same Zachariah we have in the New Testament. That's the father of John. And um, the wife, funny enough, he's called who? Who knows his wife? Who knows Zachariah's wife in the New Testament? Who? Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, where am I going with this? We all have names. There are some of our names have meanings. Look at your name and get the meaning of your name. Sometimes the names that will be given, sometimes you look, at, you you don't actually see what they mean, but they mean a lot. So my name is Betty. Betty, as you guys know, is from Elizabeth. And Elizabeth has a lot of different people give it different meaning. Um, some call it um, oath of God. So um, an oath from God. <laughs> and if Zachariah is what it says, you know, God remembers, if God makes an oath with you, he brings it to fulfillment. Whether it's long, he will bring it to fulfillment. He promised David that one of his descendants will always be on the throne. And, you know, it went a long way, like at this point, over 600 years before the birth of Christ. We read here about the branch. Jesus Christ is that branch. And it took so many years before that came to fruition. And how even that came to pass. You know, a woman that, you know, got married, the husband has died, He's, she feel really dejected. Nothing good was happening. Nothing good was happening in the life of those, you know, the, the, those people when they, when, when they end up giving birth to the child that brought about Christ. He gave a promise long ago and brought it to fruition. And that Messiah is Christ. And Christ came into this world to fulfill the promise that God made to David. So whatever promise God has put in your heart, or whatever prophecies people have spoken over your life, and I mean, as I say prophecies, you know, I hear the word, not all prophecies are mine. Some people speak, you know, negative, negativity into your life. Those are not the ones we're talking about. There are prophecies that has been speaking into your life. Hold on to them. Because God will bring them to completion. He will remember because he is God that remembers. He's the God that when he takes an oath, he does not forget it. He is God that loves you and will do everything, will move mountains to bring into light what is hidden behind those mountains in your life. You may not be seeing the things that are hiding, but he is able to, to, to fight for you. 
he's able to defeat those who have plot and plan to make your life difficult. His ways are not our ways. And how he will bring those to completion, we don't even know. See, the, the, the horses that were sent to the north, they went to avenge his people. And he says that he, he now have peace after he's done this. Before God is having peace, there was a problem there. And when that problem was taken, off, taken care of, peace came. He promised that he would take care of those people. Like I said, when you take the, 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 the notes home, you will read more about this properly. But I'm just giving you a preview of what is there because as I started, when I read one by one, I lost what is being said to me. So like Emily was saying, God speaks to us in different ways. He speaks to us through scriptures. He speaks to us even as we are standing. He speaks to us in our dreams, different ways. And there's a song that, you know, came into my head as I was sitting down here earlier, is that, you know, he knows the bitter, weary way. The endless striving during the day. The smile, the soul that weep, the soul that prays, the Father knows. Now, it's a song that I haven't heard for so long. But it came to me this morning as I was sitting down there. The Father knows. He knows how hard the fight has been in your life. He knows how you have struggled to pay those bills. He knows how you have struggled with the pains in your body. He knows how hard you have struggled with the pain in your soul. He knows how hard you have struggled with the, the, the disappointments and the betrayals you have gone through in life. He knows everything. He remembers. He is God that remembers. He knows you. He knows you personally, not as a group. He knows us for who he has created. He created you specially. He said, you are the apple of my eyes. Some of us struggle so much and we ask, where is God in all this? I want to give you this today. He is there with you. He's walking the journey with you. You might not see him. You might not know he's there, but does not mean that he's not there. He knows and he remembers you. He is God that remembers. If he has made a promise in your life, he's faithful and able to see to completion. He loves you so much that he gave the one son that he had, his only son, to take your place, to take my place, to pay for the sins that I have committed. That's how much he loves you. We have looked through, you know, all these books of prophecy and it talks to us about where we should be going, you know, the building and, you know, how we should help each other grow, how we can make this, this building, this family, a great family. My question for you is, if he is the God that knows, he is the God of oath, he is the God that you know, wants to give us the best. What is he doing with the vision that he has given to us as a church? As I said earlier in September, we're going to relaunch our vision and to see where we are going as a family. It's time, you know, during the, in the prophecy times, there are, there's time for war. There are colors that represent war. When you read this later, I ask the, you know, what does the colors mean? Yeah, there are colors of war, there are colors of peace. This is our time. They say when the Israelites have gone through trials, sometimes for 40 years, they now have peace. And then they will pray to God, and God will bring a savior to them. This is our time of peace, 
and we are going forward into the dream and the vision that God has given to us. Now, we talk of dream. Is it dream for Tim and the PCC only to bring to completion? No. When we did Nehemiah, it says that each and every one of us have a brick that will fit in. What are you doing with your brick? How are we coming together to, as part of the branch of Christ, to make this tree, you know, a beautiful tree? We need to work together as a family to know that God that made the oath and made the promise is faithful and is faithful to see to completion and he knows and he remembers you and remember whatever you are going through and he will help us go through the journey and you have a part to play as we have made a promise today that we will help little Emily to walk her walk in Christ in the same way we have a part to play in each other's life to walk a walk of faith that will be pleasing to our Father in heaven Betty, um, we're going to keep this time of calm and I'm going to invite Wendy up to pray. <laughs> Let us pray. Father God, as we come to you this morning, we lift our praise morning, we lift our praise morning, we